Let's get into it. Hello, you are tuned in to 93.5 KWDC Delta College Radio. I am your host today, Leo Marquez, and in the studio we have a special guest who is actually an RTV alumni, a word uh, acronym, if you will, that I don't say often anymore because <laughs> we don't go by that name. Um, but here today to oh, talk about his comedic career, no pun intended, <laughs> the one, the only, Angel Lopez. Hi, what's going on? <laughs> Stockton, RTV. Yes. But not RTV anymore. Wow. Well, I know, it's crazy. So, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, right? I know. Sometimes even I forget a little bit until I pop up like our canopy tent because it still says it radio still says, television oh wow we should probably get a new one at some point <laughs> <laughs> that says digital media it can be a little confusing and hang the uh, old the old one on the wall yeah yeah just as decoration or yeah, something like go. that in memory of our tv <laughs> <laughs> but yeah crazy. you graduated how long ago was that uh right before the pandy Oh, okay. Yeah. In 2019. Okay. 2019. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. You probably were the last like in person, uh, gra- uh, like commencement, I think, mm-hmm. before we went into lockdown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was. We were. Yeah. That's mean, crazy to think no about. No one saw it coming, but yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I will say. It was probably it probably had something to do with like the um what well, whatever was going on across the street during our commencement mm. because I remember going there and then there was a bunch of like old guys uh going into that hotel the waterfront oh, hotel yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. they all had gun bags Oh, okay. <laughs> and they were like there for an expo. And then right across the street is a bunch of college kids graduating. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. I didn't notice that at all. <laughs> I did. <laughs> They're all, you know, wearing khakis and their vests. Yeah. You know? That's so <laughs> crazy. Like, oh, interesting. And then COVID happened. <laughs> yeah. COVID was a wild time. I know definitely, I think just this past semester has been like, us feeling like we're finally like getting back into the groove of things. Yeah. Um, I know when Angel was uh, one of our students, like this, this space that we're in right now even was like not at all like this. I should maybe uh, I'll, I'll post a picture within the the video portion of this (laughs) just so everybody can see what it looked like. It was, it was really like not efficient. It wasn't a space that was really usable uh, for our students so whenever we post like the new updates and things that we've done everybody's always like you know like can I come back <laughs> like, yeah why didn't you guys have that when we were there <laughs> it's like every student's uh uh thing when they come back to RTV yeah or multimedia now <laughs> or D-media D-media yeah, oh, that's right digital D-media. media is our new Sorry. name <laughs> I'm not hip anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like even when I was going here, there was people that were previous alumni and they walked in. They're like, whoa. Yeah. They're like, this is crazy. And then they'd walk back here and they'd be like, this is still the same, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but now it's like everything got revamped. Yeah. And it's so cool. I would definitely encourage people to come by, check it out, yeah. take a class. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's worth it. It's awesome. The program was super cool. Um, And the professor is an amazing uh, person as well. Yes, yes. Professor Broger is incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely, I think the the culture of our program has has grown like we uh, growth is always good we we love to grow here <laughs> yeah i mean yeah look at the fern in the back can you see yeah. that <laughs> yeah that wasn't there when i was here <laughs> and it's fake it still grew <laughs> is it fake is it real it is fake oh okay yeah, i it got, <laughs> i saw the pot and i was like is it it's getting watered probably <laughs> yeah so question for you angel how how do you feel like being in this program has helped you now like even like meshing together with like your your comedy and and all of that um for me it definitely helped with uh starting a podcast i did one for a while um i haven't done an episode in a long time though (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> but it definitely helped with, um, you know, getting structure going for starting a podcast mm-hmm. and then kind of listening back to it and like being able to listen back to stuff that yeah. you do because it's like you have to do that in order to like refine whatever it is you're doing, whether it's video or audio. Um, but definitely in in studio, mm-hmm. even though it's like just my bedroom, because there's plenty <laughs> of cl- clothing in there for like sound treatment. Yeah. So um, um, that as well, you know, like um, being able to find a good spot to record in, mm-hmm. you know, because most people will just be like, all right, my living room. But that's like big and airy. Yeah. Very true. You know, and if you have a lot of walls, not a lot of stuff on them, Mm -hmm. it's going to sound bad. Yeah. So smaller space, plenty of soft stuff around like the walls here, you know, Um, and the structure as well, Mm -hmm. like being able to lead in with an intro Mm -hmm. and then go through a couple topics and then close it out, Yeah. you know, and just wrap everything up and have something written out because... That's important. If you just try to go off the top of your head, which I would do <laughs> in the beginning, and I was like, "Wait, I, I have a degree in this." <laughs> <laughs> like you lose track of of where you are. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it definitely helped there. And also, um, I did. Uh, I've produced some shows, like mm-hmm. live shows, um, which is which was pretty fun mm-hmm. uh, for the most part. Um, one thing I will say I didn't I don't think I really paid attention to in <laughs> <laughs> class was probably um contractual obligations and agreements, mm-hmm. which I think is important definitely because I got um hoodwinked on one of my last shows that mm-hmm. I did. And um, you know, it's important to always ask for your contracts <laughs> up front. Don't do any of the work until you have it yeah. and negotiate with it because... Could you clarify what hoodwinked is for anyone who oh. doesn't understand <laughs> what that term is? For the youngsters? <laughs> um, kind of like strung along, mm-hmm. you know, and then surprised, basically. Yeah. You know, like you had an idea of how it was going to go and you have talked about it, but then they spring something new on you mm-hmm. or last minute yeah so definitely a surprise or hoodwinked yes yeah um so definitely you know do your homework uh make sure everybody's happy at the end of the day Mm -hmm. if you're doing like stuff like that you know yeah um production wise um and yeah yeah i think that's definitely helped out a lot with my comedic career (laughs) absolutely i mean you have to protect yourself for sure. So contracts and things like that. And mm-hmm. I, I, again, like that's all part of like the whole pre-production process, right? Is to making sure you have all your ducks in a row, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Could you clarify on that one? <laughs> 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 What's ducks in a row, What's Leo? Ducks in a row? You know, honestly, where did that come from? Like who decided <laughs> to say like all of my ducks are here. They're lined <laughs> up. They're, you know, they're, it's, uh, this is a way to say that I'm organized. <laughs> well, also, like, shooting a sitting duck. That's probably mm. where it came from. You know what I mean? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Old-timey hunting <laughs> slang. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no. Actually, sorry. Hmm. ADHD brain. It's a mama duck with all her ducks following behind because they're right. in a row. <laughs> That's Duh. where it comes from. Exactly. <laughs> Big brain moves. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but regardless, you are doing a comedy now. And amongst yeah. other things, I, I, I know that it's not necessarily your full-time job, but right. is is that where you're trying to lead into? Yeah. Yeah. I want to lead into um, stand-up comedy mm-hmm. um, and also writing like a TV show okay. and stuff like that. Um, and eventually like a movie. Yeah. You know, I would, li- I'd like to uh, dive into the script writing realm. Um, mostly based off of like my life, mm-hmm. you know, and like stuff that I think is funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like um, there's moments where I'm just like doing something and I think about, wow, that was kind of a, f- 
funny situation that I was in, this would be this would be a great scene in like a movie or uh-huh. a TV series, but like <laughs> that's all I have is the yeah. scene. I don't have the whole thing, you know, fully developed there. But. Have you ever thought about just just doing that? Just like filming like scenes at a time? I and just have. putting it out there <laughs> just to see like is if somebody, you know, is like, hey, I like that. You yeah. Know, like do you have other ideas that we can connect this to? Um I've definitely thought of skits, mm-hmm. you know, for sure. I feel like every comedian definitely goes into skits yeah. outside of doing stand up. If you don't get stage time, well, you gotta fill that time doing something else. Mm-hmm. So I think I'll write a skit. Yeah. Speaking of like skits, I mean I, I'm definitely like a big fan of like SNL, Mad T V, you mm-hmm. know. Love love those. And uh, I've I remember when I was reading Amy Poehler's book, um, she talked a lot about like how how like a lot of the comedians start like they usually do like improv class and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Is that something you've ever thought of doing? Improv? Yeah, absolutely not. No, not for you. <laughs> no, no. Um, heck, no. <laughs> it sounds it sounds terrifying. Honestly, like pro- props to people who do do that. Like that, it seems very like intense but at the same time like even i i think even i would i mean i'd be up to do like one improv class just to try it yeah just see what it's (laughs) like (laughs) i mean it's it's fun like you improvise on a daily basis yeah but then the other trick to it is like making it funny yeah right (laughs) because you can you improvise your day to day you know Mm -hmm. you'd be like oh i gotta go to the store you know and there's no milk and it's like well what do i do now (laughs) <laughs> you know, so then you improvise and you go to another store or something, you know? Yeah. Um, and improv and comedy is, I think, just dreadful for me because I like to do jokes. Yeah. I don't, and I like to do crowd work, so that's mm-hmm. already kind of like an improv of its own. Yeah. Um, but with other people, I would probably butt heads with the <laughs> the other comics because <laughs> yeah. it's like no that's not the direction I want it to go mm. in so if I'm just doing stand up and crowd work it's like I can move it along yeah. the way I like yeah which makes sense totally um you said you like to do crowd work how is there like a specific way of like feeling the crowd out like how do you kind of get an idea of, of like okay these jokes will work with this crowd or yeah some people might get offended <laughs> you yeah know, do you do you get uh, do you have to like think about those things like right right there in the moment mm-hmm. yeah yeah you gotta um read the room yeah you know um and you learn you learn that as an open micer mm-hmm. a lot um you know you go do shows you get a spot on somebody's showcase mm-hmm. and then that's where you can really like test your gauge and like the tools in your bag yeah um to see if you're you know accurate enough with your crowd work and if you're gonna offend somebody and if your material is gonna really work on a um on like a live crowd Mm -hmm. because open mics sometimes if you're going to like open mics in like the bars or a pizzeria yeah. Sometimes a library, <laughs> you know, it, they can be anywhere. Someone's backyard. Yeah. Even um, uh, you don't always get like an audience, mm-hmm. especially in like bar settings that is there to laugh or for the comedy. So that's where you can really like um, sharpen your teeth mm. and really, you know, uh, get your chops as a comedian. Because once you can control a room of people and read it well, mm-hmm that are there and uninterested, you know, for the most part, it's like 50, 50, um, then you're going to do pretty well in a room with people that are there for, uh, the comedy. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and if you're doing it in clubs, also like comedy clubs, Mm -hmm. you want to stick to, uh, joke jokes. Yeah. You don't want to do too much crowd work because you want to, impress bookers and whatnot and mm-hmm. show them like oh yeah this is my material you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's basically an interview anytime you get on a showcase yeah right it's a, a working interview um but yeah you definitely have to be able to read the room and uh, sometimes you're gonna offend people like mm-hmm. that is 
uh, the nature of the beast yeah. in comedy. You Has can't... anybody ever like completely just like yelled at you or? Like... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because <laughs> no, I kind of know where um, the line is, uh -huh. and I like to fly close to the sun. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I like to. I don't tow it, but I definitely, you know, I kind of like knock on its door. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, I let I let the people kind of assume where I'm gonna go <laughs> next. That's I mean, you play it safe, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, sort for of. the most part. <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> if they're really testy with me, yeah, I'll just call someone out. <laughs> okay. You know, um, but for for the most part, also like a lot of the crowds that I've. Uh, performed for mm -hmm. and in front of they're all pretty open and uh welcoming of whatever because most of the people that are there are there for the shows yeah so you can almost say whatever mm -hmm. you want you could have a trump rally in there no one would <laughs> would bat an eye <laughs> they just wouldn't laugh but yeah <laughs> they'd be like what the hell is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, then, and then you go on to the next comedian, you know? Uh -huh. Sometimes, you know, yeah. Sometimes it's not always going to be your crowd also. Yeah. So is there like a like a joke that is like your go-to when maybe like mm. the crowd isn't really feeling it too much? Like what, what really gets like people's attention and they also think it's funny? So for me, when I feel like the crowd isn't vibing mm -hmm. uh, too hard, I will just go to crowd work, you know, because yeah. you can pick on the audience and they'll laugh, <laughs> right? Yeah. If you go up there with, like, your actual thoughts, emotions, and feelings and just trauma dump, <laughs> they're going to be like, ew. <laughs> they're like, that's not funny, and it's yeah. going to be quiet, and then that weight hits you. Uh -huh. Um. So you got to do something to get out fast. So you just pick on somebody else and yeah. put the pressure on them or um, or or like a, a Hail Mary joke, mm. um, which I have a couple okay. that I like to uh, use, but they're also like some of my closers. Uh -huh. So it's like, dang, <laughs> <laughs> how do I <laughs> how do I go about this? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and sometimes I just have throwaway jokes. Yeah. And if it's going bad, I just suck it up. <laughs> I'm just like, well, there's no saving this crowd. At, at that point, like, how do you deal with, I guess not necessarily rejection, but how do you, how do you manage, like, when the crowd just isn't, like, they're not getting the jokes, they're just not really feeling it? Um, do you, like, wrap it up quicker? Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll wrap it up quicker, and I'll end on a closer. And if that still doesn't work, then it's like, well, I bombed. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And it's like, on to the next one. Yeah. Right? Um, you got to – you just got to go through the motions. And, yeah. like, that one's really tough is, mm. is bombing and bombing well, you know, yeah. gracefully. <laughs> yeah. Bomb gracefully. Bomb gracefully. <laughs> <laughs> So what would you say is your biggest, like, influences? What helps you to just keep pushing forward? Because I, I can't imagine, like, comedy is probably one of the most difficult industries to get into, I feel like. Um, it is pretty difficult, uh, especially f for me because I don't live in, like, Sacramento yeah. or the Bay Area. So I'm, like, driving out there. Um and I don't get to hang out with a lot of the comedians. Because mm -hmm. what I'm finding is, like, as long as you're friends and, like, buddy-buddy with everybody. Excuse me. <laughs> I had a burp. <laughs> um, but um, you, uh, where was I going? What was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> I got thrown off. Oh, oh, because you don't live nearby. Because I don't, I don't live close enough. Um, it's extra difficult. Yeah. Um, Especially getting on shows because mm -hmm. most people are kind of like, oh, well, he's not from the area, you know, but it's like, yeah, but I'm not from like a competing area either. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I like to uh, say Sacramento is kind of like my home scene because mm -hmm. that's where I started. Um, but it's, it's difficult and it's not at the same time, mm. right? Because there's a lot of open mics you can hit up and a lot of those have, um, 
a lot of uh, comedians that are active in the scene. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the time they're run by comics that are pretty active also. Yeah. So it's good to get in there, get along, and uh, don't steal anybody's jokes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess network like any anything else, right? As, yes. Yeah. That's, that's a big thing for comedians is having a, a good business sense. Mm -hmm. So that networking is really important. Yeah. Um, like uh, my friend, I would say my friend inspires me. Mm -hmm. um, I was told about her uh, in the bar one night because I, I host a uh, monthly show mm -hmm. um, out where I live. So that's like my way of kind of getting into the scene and kind yeah. of holding a spot in it. Um, is uh, the bartender told me in the neighboring town is a is another comedian mm -hmm. local, and I was like, oh okay. And he said you should go check her out. She does this open mic, and it's like a music open mic. Mm -hmm. um, so I go over there, and check her out, and I watch her, and she did really good. And it was a little rough, but it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, because she hadn't done stand up anywhere else. Okay. Um, which, you know, is really incredible for someone to just go mm -hmm. straight to a local open mic and be like, yeah, I'm pretty funny, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to start doing this thing uh, yeah, and, and see what happens with it. Most of the time, people are there just to, like, turn their brains off and listen to, like, mus musicians. Uh -huh. So then when you have a comedian go in there in the mix, it's like, wait, what? They're talking at me. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have a guitar. Like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and um, she, she, uh, I, I saw her perform mm -hmm. and I talked to her after and I gave her a little, uh, a couple pointers mm -hmm. and um, she took them and ran with it. Yeah. And the next time I saw her, she was like amazing. And now she moved into Sacramento she hangs out with all the uh, other lady comics there mm -hmm. and um, she's been on uh, like a show every weekend oh wow yeah That's and awesome. she was in Fresno all over um, Amber Ellis is uh, is my home girl okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's killing it yeah all, uh, you know honestly and um I'm so I'm so proud. <laughs> good. And I good. get inspired. I get inspired yeah. by her, especially because it's yeah. like, man, you like it's not. She hasn't even been in like a full year. Yeah. And she just went, ran with it, and was like, I think I can do this. And she's um, she's a like a roast battle champion right now. Wow. She is six and zero. My homie Amber Ellis. Yes. <laughs> have Have you ever felt like? you have gotten like stuck when it comes to comedy like have you ever gone through like a period of time where you're just like i don't know if i want to do this anymore or just like <laughs> not feeling it uh definitely um comedy is one of those like art forms or mm -hmm. expressions of oneself that um can really make you feel like you're hitting a wall mm -hmm. um especially because you get instant um what's the uh instant reactions mm -hmm. to what you're saying and um it sucks a lot in the beginning when you're not that funny mm -hmm. um and you get like a couple laughs here and there you know you think you're doing really good and then you listen to the the tape back and you're like oh there's no one's laughing <laughs> it's like one person that yeah. filled the room you know laughing um but yeah, definitely feel stuck occasionally. It honestly, I don't think it ever really goes away, mm -hmm. whether you're you know at the top or kind of starting out or in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, it's always gonna feel like that, and it's kind of up to you to just like keep going through it and embrace the suck, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, because it's it's gonna beat you down. And you just got to get up and, like, keep going until you get funnier mm -hmm. and you can find, like, a good punchline because um, there's a saying in comedy that is uh, you'll say a, a joke a hundred times to get it right. So you have to just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> find the a, an angle on it. And don't, don't ever stop. No, you can't. Because yeah. as soon as you stop, then that's it. You're done. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> dead, <laughs> dead in the water, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you got to write, just write anything, thoughts, feelings, emotions, mm-hmm. um, something you saw that day that could be funny because you can make fun of anything. Like I made fun of the fern. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that boring green fern. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, like you got the world around you. It's it's your oyster, really. Mm-hmm. You know, put some seasoning on that. <laughs> um, but and yeah, just keep going. Don't stop believing. And you haven't. You keep going. Yeah. And you have. You have shows coming up, right? Yeah. So tell yeah. us, tell us about the the shows that you have. Um, let's see. I have, I have a few shows this coming month, August or August. I don't know when we're putting this. It'll out. be August tomorrow. So <laughs> <laughs> in August, I have shows in August. This is a pre-recorded show. Um, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, let's see. So I'm going to be in quite a few places. Uh, I'll be hosting at. Uh, Henry's Lounge in Sacramento, uh, Monday the seventh. Okay. Yeah, actually, I gotta look at my calendar. What time? <laughs> um, so that one is an open mic. Okay. So there are signups for it if uh, anybody's interested in trying their hand at comedy. <laughs> um, it's it's a fun show too. Yeah. Um, but uh, signups are like at seven thirty. Okay. And then the show begins at eight. Um, so you can come on by, you can come by a little later too. If the list isn't full, mm-hmm. I'd throw you on there. Um, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty lenient that way. The sack, the sack scene is pretty cool too. Yeah. You know, like if you're going to jump into it, I would definitely, uh, take a leap in the Sacramento scene. Um, plenty of places to get started. Maybe um, I'll go sign up. Just kidding. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You should tell us about no. your day. <laughs> <laughs> um uh or trauma dump it's cheaper than therapy <laughs> <laughs> um uh but i'll be hosting there at henry's lounge august 7th it's a monday night okay so, you know if you're getting off work and you want to like take a load off or something come hang out with us um and uh i am on a showcase at the punchline mm-hmm. um august 13th um, it's an uh, off-the-wall uh, showcase mm-hmm. hosted by Shannon Battle. He's, uh, he's a really cool comedian. Is that his real last name? I think so. That's pretty cool. It's <laughs> Honestly, yeah, it is That's really cool. That's a pretty cool name, Shannon Battle. <laughs> yeah, and, like, and he is like the coolest person you'll ever meet, too. Yeah. He's super chill, touring comedian. Uh, I think he's from SAC. He might be from... Uh, back east I don't know where he's from originally Mm -hmm. it's very hard for me to like talk to him because he's like all over the place yeah I get I talk to him like once or twice here and there but it's like quick and then he's like I gotta go yeah um but uh I'll be on a showcase there and then August 17th or um I'm sorry I skipped a pretty big one (laughs) August 9th (laughs) I'm also in uh Sacramento these are all in SAC, by the way. But um, okay. Laughs Unlimited, oh, I'll okay. be there August 9th. It's in it's over in old historical Sacramento, mm-hmm. um, and I think Laughs Unlimited is like one of the oldest uh, comedy clubs in California. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty cool. It's nice. Um, a lot of cool comedians come through there. Uh, but I'm on the Broken Home Showcase there, okay. uh, hosted by. A good buddy of mine, Ryan Holloway, he's uh, making some big, big waves in the comedy scene, um, and it's all produced by Gabriel Alexander, which is a Stockton local, uh, nice. born and raised California. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he, he, I think he's lived around the block, but um, he's from Stockton, mo- mostly. Sorry. Um, okay. Yeah, super cool guy uh, from the 209. So he's uh, he's making some waves also in the comedy scene. Um, and then August 17th, that one's my show that I mm-hmm. produce uh, out in Avery. If anyone's coming out for the weekend, 
you know, you can stop by uh, the Howard's Mystic Saloon. That one's pretty cool. Um, the name sounds cool. Yeah. Every time I see you post uh, some kind of show happening, like, <laughs> it sounds like a cool place. Well, the best part about it, too, is for all, like, you witchy people out there, <laughs> is um, it's Halloween-themed 365. Yeah. There's skulls everywhere. There's a big, giant skeleton. Uh-huh. And the as soon as you walk through the doors, um, their chandeliers are all skeletons, and really um, cool. they have like uh, a lot of cool like ro- classic rock uh-huh. uh, posters on the walls, and um, a pretty big stage too, which is uh-huh. nice. And um, uh, what else? There is a uh, oh, this I'm doing a thing with the uh, stool that the comedians have. You know, like there's the mic- uh-huh. microphone and then a stool. Um, after every show, I have the comics sign the, uh, uh, the seat. Oh, okay. So they all sign the seat. Then, uh, I'm going to pop it off later and kind of like clear coat it. Yeah. So, um, the owners can hang it up on their wall. That's pretty cool. Um, and that's August 17th. Nice. Uh, the Hell's Lounge Comedy Showcase. Very cool. That is actually the day before we start the fall semester. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll be able to come. <laughs> um, and then you can, you know, follow me on Instagram and yeah. uh, keep up to date uh, and check the link in my bio for What's your uh, Instagram? Tell, tell for our stuff. listeners. Um, <laughs> so that is for me to know and you to find out. Um, <laughs> kidding. Uh, it's Angel Lopez. Uh, and it's spelled the way it sounds. Mm-hmm. For a lot of um, Latin speakers, uh, they th- they just spell it Angel mm-hmm. Lopez, but it's literally spelled the way it sounds: uh, O N H E L L L O P E Z. Uh, no capitals. <laughs> um, so you can find me there. You can email me there too <laughs> if you want. I don't know. Um, and yeah, you can check out my Instagram. I post a lot of stuff in my stories. I've yeah. kind of gotten away from like <laughs> posts on my feed, yeah, unless they're comedy uh, related, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, like videos and whatnot. Yeah. But other than that, I've not posted anything except for in my stories. Which I is think that's fun. usually the way most people go. Yeah. Anyways, is just yeah. post into their stories. I'm not a news outlet on Instagram <laughs> where I have to post something every day, but that's a bad. That's bad. That's bad on me. <laughs> bad llama. Um, <laughs> I, I gotta post more on there. Actually, oh, it's the consistency. Yeah. It'll kill it's, you. It's if you hard. Don't. It is hard. I will say. I mean, I I try to keep up with my own Instagram and. The yeah. digital media one, so I totally get it. Yeah, it just it feels like a drag. Sometimes <laughs> it's just like oh, I gotta type. It's a lot. You know, it's I a lot of work. A it's a lot of work. And now there's threads. Yes. Now I gotta get on threads. I gotta do the something whole, about that. Yeah, I haven't <laughs> gotten on that yet. I'm. It's a, It's interesting. Yeah. Also, um, what it <laughs> Elon Musk changed the uh, Twitter logo to an yes. X, and it's like. It's weird. When I first saw it on my phone, I was like, what is this? I was yeah. like, did I download like a stock exchange app or something? <laughs> I was really confused. And then I clicked on it. I was like, this is Twitter. What is this? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, Well, I deleted Twitter a long time. As soon as Elon got it, I <laughs> deleted it. I was like, I'm not supporting that egomaniac. <laughs> I don't even know why I have it. I don't even <laughs> You like, don't even. It, that's it. the thing. And it's like the last resort on yeah. like your cycle. Of apps, it, you know, it really it's like is. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok. Yeah. And then that barren wasteland mm-hmm. Twitter. <laughs> I think it's just, I mean, it just basically lives on my phone and, and that's, it, that's yeah. the gist of it. It's it's an annoying app. Yeah. I've tried it. I've tried <laughs> posting on <laughs> tweeting. I've tried tweeting and it's just like nothing gets any traction and I'm like not <laughs> yeah. um, invested enough in it to like... You know, and like, don't you have to pay now? I don't think so. You don't. Well, you don't have to, but, but it's like, if you don't, you don't get a blue check mark, and it's just like, I don't need this kind of like yeah. extra depression cycle. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, I'm not verified. You know, and like Instagram was the same thing. So you know you're real, but it's like, well, just don't click the link. 
Yeah. That, that it's, people it's send weird. you. I don't know. I'm not gonna pay for any blue check marks, but I don't I, want to. To me, Twitter is like the the unhinged version of of Instagram. Threads. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Threads, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Twitter's Twitter's uh, like the wild wild west. <laughs> Yeah. Explicit content is allowed on there, <laughs> and Elon's there for it, you know? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe that's why it's, it, I, I don't know. That's why it's an X now. Maybe. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know what? Oh, um, I know we're trying to wrap up, but I had, like, another thought. Uh-huh. I saw something on Instagram Yeah. Uh, yesterday. The uh, same... Or a co-founder of Ocean Gate uh-huh. wants to take people to Venus in 2025, oh. and it's like I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> just like, Is it going to be remote control too? <laughs> <laughs> They're actually going to use a joystick from an old Sega. <laughs> oh yeah, or maybe they should use like a Wii controller. Oh yeah, yeah. a Wii. Oh my God, you're right. That's what they're going to do, and not not a Nintendo licensed one, but uh-huh. like a <laughs> yeah. off-brand. <laughs> You know, they some got it off of Amazon. No, they got it in Rite Aid. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> in their electronics section. Yeah. Oh my God. They'll probably just use something they get their kids getting a Happy Meal. Who, who knows? <laughs> who knows? That's crazy though. Oh my God. I. I mean, come on. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. No one's gonna sign up for it. But if they do, you know, that's on them. <laughs> that's. You know what you're signing up for yeah. at that point. <laughs> Full disclosure, it's not, a, you know, it's not some uh, Logitech remote controller, yeah. <laughs> $5 replacement thing. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. That was, bad. That was a bad uh, PR stunt by Ocean Gate. Yes. Oh, man. Hopefully they stop, but hopefully you don't. So keep going <laughs> with the comedy, and uh, I'm I'm definitely I've always been rooting for you. Uh, oh, fun fact you. about Angel is that he was actually our you were our last federal work study student I oh. think before the the pandemic happened, and then yeah. we and not until just recently got a new federal work study student. Really? Yeah. So we were wow. without one for a quite a long time. <laughs> Um, we did have the whole internship thing and stuff like that. So uh-huh. that was a little bit different, but, uh, definitely it's, you know, having an extra, extra hand, extra hand here is, is very, very useful. So we, we very much appreciate Angel and, Aww. uh, we, su- we support you in everything that you do, but this is all the time that we have for today. Thank you for coming in. Uh, this, uh, episode has been a production of KWDC 93.5 LPFM Delta College Radio. This program is made possible by listeners like you. Programming is produced by the student staff and faculty of San Joaquin Delta College's digital media department. It is supported by the Delta College Department of Arts, Humanities, and Multimedia, the Career Technical Education and Workforce Development Office, and the State of California. And as always, thank you for listening. And to those on our YouTube channel watching this, thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoy. Uh, Angel, we appreciate you coming in. Thank and you. And we wish you the best on all your upcoming shows. Thank you. And thank you for the time, Leo. Of appreciate course, it. Always. And uh, yeah, tune in to 93.5, man. It's a cool <laughs> radio station. Support local. <laughs> yes. We appreciate it. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>